Well, we're into January season now, and it's silly season in the transfer window. There's some rumours that are making people bitter, some rumours that are making people witter. All the while, some losers creating all this hysteria from his bedroom on Twitter. You listen to the Red Report with myself, Chris Mason, and Carlo van der Watering on iFollow. Good afternoon, welcome live to Oakwell, and welcome to your fortnightly Reds Report, the only Barnsley FC podcast dedicated to your town, your team, your club, with official access to the players, staff of Barnsley Football Club. Joining myself now is Carlo van der Watering. Carlo, um, we were due to be back last week, but obviously it dropped on the new year, and you've been off gallivanting to Holland, and I've <laughs> as you do, I, and, and I've been. Working. <laughs> working, so you know we've had to we've finally manage to squeeze ourselves into the boardroom today at Oak. Well, we're here. There's a pie on the table. We don't know who it is, so we can't get a piece of that. But the salad as well. Forget the salad. <laughs> we don't look like this eating salad as people who have met us will obviously realise. But um, Carlos, straight into things. The elephant in the room, <clears throat> Millwall, last week. Yeah. Um, a defeat after taking the lead. When you look at the players that we allowed to go out prior to the game. A very weak bench, I think, is a fair assessment when you look at the bench. Some of the lads, yeah, I think, I think some in. of the lads from the under twenty threes were under promoted. Under were promoted up to make the eighteen, which I made think, yeah. the decisions a bit more baffling. I would assume, but well, let's look at the Cameron McGee thing before we touch on Millwall. Cameron's gone to Scunthorpe. Is Cameron coming back to Barnsley? How do you see it? I think Cameron is one of them that he probably needs regular football to get the best out of him. Um, and I suppose the hope is that. Although under different circumstances, a bit like the Monker scenario, if he gets regular football and becomes the player that we know he can be, you know he'll he'll, he'll be back. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of midfielders, haven't we? We've got a lot of midfielders and, and an opportunity to bring in a bit more quality now as well. Yeah, and I think um, there I used the word ruthless, but we've we've, we've had to be, haven't we? Jared Bird, He's Cameron gone. McGeehan, um, and and we've had to sort of clear out to, to make way because. Paul said it in his press conference and he's not wrong. We need players that make this team better. Not players for the future that might need some time to adjust. We need players that can come with this team and make that team better. And and to do so, you know, we, we have to make space. So out went Ugbo, Bird, McGeehan and it's just waiting to see what uh, what comes in. Walton's gone out on loan as well, obviously, yes, as well. Yeah. A bit more experience for Jack Walton there. But is there a squad imbalance then, Carlo, in your opinion? Um I definitely see, you know, it's well, it is January. Um, I'd say there's at least what four, maybe five that I think we need to bring in to have a balanced squad and and to have that competition for places that Paul likes. Because at this moment in time, not by anyone's fault, um, you could easily I, pick an eleven with probably three subs guaranteed, fourteen players, couldn't you? Could, yeah, fourteen. You'd yeah, pick, and, you? and and I think you know the the, the under twenty threes that were promoted to the bench. I think that's good and that gives them some experience. And for us to have our best team out and and to be able to compete and sort of climb out to that little dip that we're in we, we need players Look at, let's look ahead at, look, sorry look back to the Millwall game then you're going from, through through Brad Potts a terrific finish really actually yeah. as he came to me he's managed to smash it on but then you get to Millwall equalise you get to half time Joe Willett they score again which how many times have we said it Yeah. straight after half time the lads are switched on bang it's 2-1 Millwall Joe Williams gets sent off not as much of a head's gone when I saw it a second time the tackle as what I thought originally but still nonetheless a red card yeah, he gave then, the referee the decision to he, make yes he didn't he made the decision um, in this day and age you're going to walk for that for me the wheels the wheels came off how disappointing was it to see the wheels come off like because if that was a league game if the morale would have been so low anyway after the game but a league game that could have had catastrophic consequences couldn't it if you feel like that yeah completely and, and I honestly thought you go 2-1 down and then you think right let's see what we're made of that job then becomes a lot lot harder with having just the 10 players on the pitch back in my mind I still think but you know what defensively we were shoring up a little bit you know we, we, we were competing better um, if it sacrifices somebody up top to, to, you know to, to, have the, to have the bodies at the back um, but I, I, I don't know. I think it's one of the matches that you write off. We're incredibly lucky with an FA Cup match. A couple of them would have been great. It would have been revenue for the club and everything else. Something for the fans to get forward to because you're in that draw. Are we getting a big name? Are we home or away? That's gone. To be fair, we need to concentrate on the league. So we need to look at the positives out of it and say at least, you know, we don't have to worry about that. But it can't happen again. No, that's what I was about to ask you. So are you in the, the school of it was a bonus game or are you in the school of it's a bad defeat to take because that's what you've all you've just mentioned all the good work the, the nil nil at home to Preston 
only conceding one goal against Reading and then, you know, the, the nil-nil at Brentford and then yeah. not conceding on New Year's Day to, let's all be honest, a poor Sunderland side but still a clean sheet and a victory. The first one, uh, one in 11 that is now in the league for Barnsley in terms of victories. But that defeat, extra game or not, it, it did an, undid a lot of good work that we've, it, it that we've seen defensively. It did because all... You know, if we talk about, and we do a lot, don't we? But people get paid to put together stats. So if you look at the stats, you look at the four goals that were conceded on that day. Now, mind, you know, you can ignore the red kind of, we conceded four goals. And um, we were climbing out, like you said, we weren't conceding as much. We were nicking a 1 0 win. But um, it, it, it's, a bad, it's a bad one to take. Is it a bonus game? Yeah, maybe. But I think the taste lingers, doesn't it? And, and this is now the right time to make those. Changes throughout the squad and okay, and, yeah. and 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 improve the squad because because that's what needs doing because I I get you know some teams will say it's harder playing against a team of ten men we've had it before as bands we've played against a team of ten men and we've drawn or um, Millwall found it a lot easier obviously because four one is um, yeah it's, it's, it's not the result we're going to talk about is and it? certainly given the uh, the run the bat against us the last couple of years it was certainly a bit of a cup final for Millwall in uh, in my opinion but. Let's move on then. You've just spoke there, obviously, Carlo, about building the squad and bringing in different players, players to make the team better. It's split opinions what happened on Monday, but Kiefer Moore has arrived at Barnsley. Some fans, he's been playing in League One, blah, blah, blah. But of my, he's, I'm of the opinion that now Barnsley have a chance to look at buying the, the players that are playing at the top of their game. Whether whatever league he's been playing in, Kiefer's been playing at the top of his game. He scored 13 goals for Rotherham. And... He's played very well for Rotherham United and he's been a big focal point of what they've been doing good. For him to jump up a league, you don't look... I'm always of the belief that as a striker, once you know where the net is, you, you, you know, you very far, you find it hard to get in, get yourself in a drought and I think we've got a player on the top of his game. What's your view of Kiefer Moore coming in? Absolutely, completely agree with you. I think he'll improve the team. I think it's the sort of striker that we need. I've said before to the people that sit around us, I've, I've harked more than once to you how I see it as the Henry Wilkinson scenario, a tall striker to drag some defenders away, create a bit of a gap. Um, we've said it before, long ball over to Tom doesn't always work. He needs to play. So I, I was delighted when I saw, and what a fantastic way to announce it, by the way, on Twitter. So well done to, to Andy and the team here. Uh, when I saw that he'd arrived, literally, um, absolutely fantastic. I think it's a statement of intent of the board, of of you know, who we're looking at. And all those people that talk about, oh, League One, you know what? Um, Conor Horahan came from a lower league. Um, Josh Scowen came from a lower league. Um, you know, the, the, the list goes on, doesn't it? Um, there's, there's a reason we've bought him. It's goals that we need. Um, that sort of striker, because he's not just tall, so he'll score headers. If, if you look at his compilation on uh, on iFollow with the goals that he scored, he, he scores them all over. So I'm absolutely delighted. Firmly believe he'll make the team better. Can't wait to see him in a red shirt. And um, hopefully, you know, that's the standard of people we're going to bring in. Because let's, let's, let's not forget, people talk about League One, but actually... It was, um, there, there were other clubs after him as well. So the way we're going to hear from Kiefer Moore now as he spoke to iFollow exclusively following his move from Ipswich Town. Kiefer, welcome to Barnsley. Just what made you join the club? Um, just really looking around and the whole feel of the club. I feel, I felt at home here. I, I, I like it up north, obviously, I'm a southerner, but um, yeah, I like it up here and it's, it's a great club to pay for. So was it a relatively easy to see him? Oh yeah, of course, yeah. When, when I knew Barnsley were in for me, um, yeah, it was, I was, pretty much made my mind up straight away. And we're back on the Reds Report, Chris Mason, Carlo van der Water, and joined on the line now by Brian Howard. Good afternoon, Brian. Cheers for joining us. Afternoon, guys. How are we? We're not too bad. We're obviously into silly season in, uh, in January. And it's well, obviously nice, isn't it? No, that's right. It. Exactly. It's, um, <laughs> it's obviously silly season for yourself as well, Brian. How's, uh, Wait, how's, how's yeah. January been for yourself so far? I agree with you. Silly season. Uh, yeah, madness. So, uh, I was in Glasgow over the weekend doing a deal that changed my flight three times. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, silly season, mate, at the moment. Just obviously, we're fans. We go and watch our team at three o'clock on a Saturday and we're delighted. As in, like this week, when on Monday there's an announcement, Barnsley signed Key for more. Just take us through from an agent point of view the amount of work, because people are saying, and fans say, oh, we should have signed five or six by now. It's not an easy process, is it? <laughs> it's not an easy process. Um, I literally, I've just got off the phone to uh, to a manager, and actually, you guys would know him, um, uh, but I can't say who now. Um, <laughs> he's not he's not a current Barnsley manager, but maybe an old one. And uh, it's funny that ten days ago there was an inquiry for one of his players that I look after, 
and 10 days later we're still nowhere near getting it done it's gone back and forth so it goes from you know a, a player an agent and manager to another manager to a director of football to a head of recruitment to a chief exec to a chairman and all the way up and all the way back down and everyone's got to have their own say and their own money's worth so it's uh, it's difficult to get over the line what was it like when you were a player brian was it as difficult as, as it is now or is it, is it always been this way um, I think it's more difficult now because, like I said, there's these new roles, there's head of recruitment, there's director of football, there's managing directors, there's chief execs. You know, back back when I was playing, it was more player to agent to manager. Manager asked the chairman if he could have the money. It was yes or no, and it was either done deal, get that one done, or we move on to the next one, where now it's everyone's got to have their, their say in it, really. Just um, looking at our club at the moment, um, sort of sitting, oh, we're safe at the bottom, but, you know, it, 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 it's a precarious game. A couple of results drag you straight into the bottom three. Um, we've let some of our younger players go, um, some on permanent, some some out on loan. As a professional football player, what sort of proposition does Barnsley pose? If somebody says, Barnsley are after you, I mean, you're in this world. Um, surely the work that Hecky's done, the promotions we've had, um, have put us in a better light. Because we've always been sort of like the black sheep of your Yorkshire, so to speak, where every other club were always bigger than ours. Um, yeah. but, but the work we're doing with our younger players, what, how is that viewed from, from players but from other clubs? I think if I'm looking at, uh, for a player perspective, and I'm between 19 and sort of 23, 24, and my aim is to go and play higher, but, you know, I've not been given that opportunity, but I need a club that is either going to develop me and under great management and, and help a club progress. You know, it's, it, Barnsley's a, it's a great pool. And I think especially now, though, that you've got the investment and the takeover is much more settled. I think the manager is a, is a great pool for any young player um, because, because of what he's done and especially the club as well, what the players that they've developed over the last few years. Um, it, you know, if I'm a young player, I'm, I'm looking, I want to go sign there. Yeah. Um, and, but now, hopefully, Barnsley are in the financial situation where they don't have to sell. So yeah. they can keep these players and build a squad and build a team. And I think that's kind of, you know, from dealing with, with, with the manager and Gose a lot over the last few weeks, that it's the, the new way the club's going to go about it. Certainly, and it's a shame that the takeovers certainly come for Paul maybe 12 months too late, the players that they had last January. Obviously, Brian have moved on. What have you made of the takeover now then? What, what does it look like now with the future for Barnsley? I, I think it's a good thing. Um, I think there's that security there. Um, I think it's, it's definitely got to be kept in the way that Patrick built the club. Um, I think Patrick's done great things for the club over the, you know, the last so many years that he's been there. Um, so as long as they can keep that sort of legacy and keep but just take it to the next level, um, like you said, he, he's obviously got the players in. It's now having the money there to keep the players. Like you said, maybe twelve months ago, you wouldn't have lost a Hurrain or a Winnell, these types of players. But there's other players there now to be able to go and spend that money on a Kiefer Moore, who probably the most informed striker outside the, below the championship. Yeah. That's, that shows that you know, Barnsley mean business and you know, I, you know, I know I can't say who and stuff like that but I know they're in the market for other players as well that are going to improve that team and that squad and, and it is, it, 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 it is on, on those two ways that it works doesn't it we're able because of the financial investment to offer Key for more a three and a half year deal which for, for him and you know the what he's achieved in League One is for him obviously a very very good deal but also if there's going to be inquiries about let's for instance say yeah. uh, Liam Lindsay at the back that that you know if there is interest we can actually say well we're in a position now to renegotiate a contract because you, we want you to stay and we won't have the accidents that we've seen before no. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It keeps the players, and you know, recently, um, you know, I've done two new contracts for for Jacob Brown and, and Gerard Bird, who are two very highly rated young players. Where you know, maybe they've normally offered a year and sort of seen how he's done. They've actually gone right. Here's a three year or two and a half year deal contract. We believe in you. We're going to develop you. But you know, for Jared's gone out on loan, I went to the game at the weekend, and he was absolutely brilliant against Bradford. He, he, you know, he's probably the best player on the pitch, other than an X red But uh, Otis can't. Um, so you know, something like that. And you know, if potentially now that Keith Moore's come in, Jacob would be allowed out to go out on loan and, and progress. You know, get their careers kickstarted, and then come back to the, to Barnsley next year in the first team. And you know, really push for Paul's starting lineup. Certainly will be doing. As we you just mentioned, things on the field, Brian. How, we, we, we've been talking earlier about how we've they've, they've stopped conceding goals prior to the Millwall game and things looked looked good at the back. Even though it was just a cup game and a bit of a bonus game, in the words of the manager, how deflating will it be to see all the hard work done over Christmas and New Year at Sunderland be undone in, in one game? Um, yes, it's, it's disappointing, but like you said, uh, uh, 
yeah, it's always good to have a cup run, as, as we all know that yeah. you know, one of my favourite memories of the club when, when we had the cup run. But I think with the new investment, with the takeover, I think it's vital and really crucial that you stay in the championship this year. Yeah. I think if you stay in the championship this year with the investment, with now the backing behind the club, you can really then you know, add to it in the summer and move forward and, you know, next year have the cup run. So it's obviously disappointing. Everyone wants to win it in the FA Cup, but don't you take it for what it is. And it wasn't a league game. It's not damaged the league position or the goal difference in the league. So, yeah. you know, you just kind of take those ones for what it is. Um, as a as a final question then, Brian, uh, the league leaders, Wolves, we welcome them to Oakwell at three o'clock on Saturday. Um, an extraordinary story, I suppose, of a manager that came in and then people, I don't think anybody actually tipped Wolves, didn't they, for promotion, no. um, but th- there has been a bit of investment. Um, what, what, what sort of threat do they pose for us on, on Saturday? For me, they're, they're the best team that's been in the Championship for a long time. Yeah. Um, it's a bit of investment, there's an unbelievable amount of investment in there. Um, it's uh, uh, Mr. Mendez, who's this super agent. He owns 10% of the management company of the Chinese consortium that owns Wolves. All of a sudden, his first ever client is the, the Moon manager. They're then signing the youngest ever Champions League um, captain, a Portuguese guy. So um, there's uh, there's a lot of investment and a, yeah, and a lot of people that actually kind of knew all this did tip walls um, but because a lot of the players were kind of unknown but you know, we're talking about Champions League players coming and playing the championship and yeah. the money that they're on the, from there, or they're bidding for an AC Milan striker there was some some Spanish guy that plays for him that said he got turned down a deal to Real Madrid and then ended up at Wolves so um, <laughs> they're certainly not really uh, you know, fair, financial fair play going on they've, they've obviously found their ways around that uh, they are almost the Man City of the Championship, so I expect them to go and win the league comfortably. And you know, I actually went to Reading the other night, and someone said, "Man, said they're actually worried that they'll beat Reading's record for the points tally this year." So, I think on Saturday, the uh, the boys are really up against it. They certainly are, but it's going to be a game that it's all about showing what Barnsley can do and not what Wolves are all about, because we know what Wolves are all about now, and um, and getting key for more in the side. Because, like you say, Brian, he's he's coming in at the top of his game. We a lot of the fans are worried that he's he's maybe from the league below, but like you say, he's at the top of his game in League One for Rotherham, and you've played along some strikers yourself, who you know when they're on a run, they just keep going, don't they? Yeah, it's confidence. Strikers as well, you know, he's scoring batches, so if he can hit the ground running and. I mean, if you go and score on your debut against the league leaguers, then what a great start that is. So um, hopefully he can hit the ground running, hopefully buy straight into to Hecky and the club's uh, sort of ethos and what they're about. And hopefully it gives a lift to all the other players to say, look at look who we're signing out. We need to up our game. This is, this is the level we're at now to, to keep our place in the team at Barnsley. Certainly. Brian, cheers for your time. All the best for the uh, for the rest of January and we'll hopefully speak yep. to you again soon. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thanks cheers, for having Brian. us. Bye-bye. 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 And joining us now, current first team player Lloyd Isgrove joins us. Lloyd, cheers for joining us. Hello. Hey. Good to see you from you. No worries. Lloyd, um, obviously out of the cup after Saturday's defeat at Millwall, what is your reflection on the game from the weekend, if any? Um, yeah, I thought we started well. Obviously, tough place to go, Millwall at the den. Um, got the goal early and then... I don't know, so we took our foot off the gas a bit and then they got back into the game just for half time and then in the second half just turned into a real cup tie then and then obviously with Joe sending off it was difficult for us to get back in the game after that really so yeah disappointing result but obviously all focus just goes back on the league now anyway yeah yeah, definitely now uh, you yourself just made your way back from injury and similarly to last time uh, you've made quite the impact when you were introduced back into the squad um, is it easier knowing that you hit the ground running like you did last time is that easier on the mind? Um, yeah I guess so obviously I just try and do anything I can to help the team and um, like you said when I've come back in we sort of seem to be picking up results so if that's anything to do with me obviously it's, it's a great help but um Obviously, it's a team game, so I just go out there and do what I can for for the, for the badge, really, and for the shirt. So, yeah, I just give my all every game, and I'm hopefully just trying to get results. Certainly, certainly doing that as well, Lloyd. Um, obviously, a massive game at the weekend. The leaders are in town. We arguably back in September, I think, gave Wolves their hardest game of the season at Molyneux, um, unluckily losing in the last minute. How important is it to make Saturday's game, though, more about us, Lloyd, and what Barnsley are all about, than and, and not worry about the big spenders from Wolves? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, I wasn't involved in the away game, but the lads said they like definitely deserved at least a point there. So to 
do that then and they've gone on to like not lose many games so obviously yeah it's a big game for us but like you said we're only going to focus on us and what we can do to hurt them not what they're going to bring to us obviously we just go into every game trying to win and trying to score goals and uh, they're, yeah. they're great from set pieces and we know their strengths so we're going to try and counteract their weaknesses and um, play for our strengths yeah. yeah, completely. Now, the last time you were on the show was just before the playoff final in 2016. And then it, it seemed that we spent a year on Twitter with the hashtag announce is growth. Uh, um, obviously, that deal came over the line. Um, the most iconic photo for me was you against the West End in your red stop uh, after obviously the pictures with Gaultier on the pitch. Um, what was it like for you? Do you feel extra pressure knowing how much you were loved by the fans and, and that fantastic season that you, that you were part of? Does that put extra pressure on you are you one that says you know it's a couple of seasons later we're in the we're in the championship and I'm just going to give my all um, yeah of course I always give my all but I wouldn't say it adds more pressure I thought uh, when I signed here obviously I knew I had the fans on my side so if anything that sort of helped me he's like he's like the signing I guess like I wasn't really a, like a new player as such as the other players that have joined as well so in that sense I think it was like it was nice for me to join with the fact like knowing the fans that they know I was playing like they like me and stuff from the she's not happened on the floor so I think that did really help and it helped my decision to come here and work under um, Hecky so yeah, I don't feel the added pressure at all. So, and like the fans know, I always give my all every game. So, I'm just going to keep continuing to do that. So, you certainly have done, Lloyd, every time put on the red shirt. Speaking of. Um players coming into the squad the big lads coming uh, on Monday Kiefer Moore's come in how's he settled in Lloyd since he's moved from Ipswich yeah obviously I think he had his medical on Monday and then we got a chance to train with him on Tuesday and um, I was actually surprised such a big lad how well like he can move and stuff um, obviously we trained we did some finishing um, crossing and finishing sessions and stuff and um, yeah he seems to settle in really nicely and that obviously he's looking for a place to live in up here but yeah he seems a nice lad and um, obviously like I said we've only spent one day with him but I think it'll settle in nicely and I'll add a bit, something a bit different that we haven't got up top at the moment certainly will now that's the, the football out of the way now we're just the, the feature that the fans like to listen to um, first off when we uh, we talk to the players Lloyd we like to ask who is your best mate in football who's my best mate in football yeah um my best mate in football um, I'll sit at the well the closest one I'm up to at the moment is probably Jason McCarthy I spend a lot of time um off the pitch of him and obviously knowing him from Southampton before and obviously we're both signed here now um, I'll probably say him yeah yeah um, how, if we were to ask the, Red, uh, the, the rest of the Red squad how would they describe Lloyd Isgrove if <laughs> you uh, um, very um, uh, very hyper probably very hyper <laughs> that's what we can live with that <laughs> yeah um, yeah very energetic um, bring bring a bit to the dressing room, I guess. Um, but obviously, like like you say, not work hard and that. But yeah, probably really energetic and um, to, like lift the mood and spirit and stuff. So I'm probably having a change room, I guess. <laughs> Excellent. Who's um, who's your dream team, mate, Lloyd? Who would you, if you could pick any player to line up alongside you for the Reds, who would it be? For the Reds, yeah. uh, for us, um, if it could be any player, can yeah. be. You, yeah. I mean, obviously going to be Conor Uran, isn't it? But. <laughs> 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 playing against him next weekend don't we so yeah. Say. But, um, yeah to play with me um, yeah um, it's hard one but I'll, I'll have to say Ronaldo Cristiano Ronaldo so, uh, we'll give him a ring and see if he's uh, if yeah. he um, <laughs> what, you're only young but what's your proudest achievement in football so far um, definitely winning at Wembley to um, send Barnes into the championship yeah. it's the best moment of my life so that's the clear, clear winner yeah, yeah. Uh, on the flip side Lloyd what's been your toughest defeat in football toughest defeat yeah um, whether it be an injury or something along those lines anything uh, I reckon when we lost to Sheffield United in the cup when I was at Southampton that was pretty tough yeah yeah um, yeah. A bit of a choice for you now. Captain Wales to a World Cup win or Captain the Reds to the, in the Premier League? What, just to a, so a World which Cup one, win? Which one Wales, would you prefer? Uh, captain. Yeah, Captain Wales or to the World Cup. Or just Captain in the Premier League. Or Captain the Reds in the Premier League. Well, I'm not winning anything. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. We know <laughs> you're <laughs> See, he's intelligent because nobody else has ever said that. I have to ask that. <laughs> 
if we do anything, yet, I'll have to say World Cup. Yeah. Certainly. Jared Bird said World Cup, didn't he? So. Yeah, young Jared did so. <laughs> Um, on, oh, your, fair enough. <laughs> on your telephone, Lloyd, what's the, mule, uh, the most used app? The most used app? Yeah. Um, it's Instagram. Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Nothing wrong with a good pig. Got to be. Um, if yeah. we were to go down your contacts, which contact is the most used? <laughs> My girlfriend's. Yeah, your girlfriend. It's always a good answer. <laughs> um, if you were, I, mean, I mean, this is obviously, if you were told you had one hour left to live, Lloyd, what would you sit down and watch? Before I want to sit down and watch. Yes. Um, or an hour. If I had an hour, probably season five, episode five of Entourage. There you go. See, <laughs> very, that's fantastic. He obviously loves that episode. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> on your um, on your games console, what's your favourite game? Right. The game that you're playing at the most. Sorry, say that again. On your games console, PS4, Xbox. If you okay, want. yeah. Um, what's your most played game? Or your favourite game at the moment? Uh, FIFA has to be. FIFA, yeah. Got it on now at the moment. Yep, very good. I'll be on that one myself, definitely. <laughs> um, when, when was the last time you went to the pictures, Lloyd, and what did you go and see? Last time I went to the pictures, I think it would have been when I went to watch the new Saw film. I went with Jason McCarthy and our girlfriends, and the managers actually sat two seats behind us. Super. Right. You can, can believe it, to be honest. <laughs> that was probably the last thing I watched <laughs> if you could only listen to one song for the rest of your life in the car you know headphones on on, on the coach to away game one song what would that be um that would be future low life superb uh, what was the last gig that you went to what was the last gig you went to Lloyd um Drake last March all squad of the Did you all go as a good? Did you yeah. did you go on the Gordon's go. coach? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> Everybody. Nah, <yeah>. <laughs> um, what was the last? What was the last book that you read? Now, if you don't read books, that's fine because Adam Hamels was Peppa Pig to one of his kids. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, he reads that every night, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he loves the picture. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Uh, no, I don't really read. To be fair, okay, no, that's fine. Can't, uh, um, can't remember the last bit of it. When was what was the last holiday you went on? The last holiday, yes. Um, Marbella last summer. Marbella, nothing like yep. a bit of Marbella in the summer. Yeah. Right, the quick fire questions, the last five. In the current okay. squad at Barnsley FC, who is the worst dressed? The worst dressed, yes. Um, <laughs> you kill me. I'm gonna say uh, Adam Hamill. Adam Hamill. Adam Hamill. Um, who's the biggest joker in the group, Lloyd? Biggest joker, yeah. Joe Williams. Yeah, Joe Williams. Who's got the worst banter? The worst banter? Yeah. Um, the worst banter? That's hard. Um, I can't even think. We'll move um, on then, we'll move on. Um, who's got the worst yeah, taste? Not. Who's got the worst taste in music? Adam Davies. I know every time. Right. Him. <laughs> Is Lloyd Isgrove part of the Costa Gang? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you are, so there is one. We're getting there, we're getting closer. Before the season ends. We're getting closer. <laughs> we spoke to Mark Roberts we, uh, earlier in the season and he definitely said Angus MacDonald was the leader. Yeah. So we know. Yeah, he was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and lastly, Lloyd, before you leave us, who's the longest in the shower? Pardon? Who's the longest in the shower? The longest in the shower, Liam Lindsay. Liam Lindsay. Lloyd, thanks a lot. All the best for Saturday. Been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers, Cheers Lloyd. Thank you. Bye bye. We're back on the Reds Report. Chris Mason, Carlo van der Watering, and we're joined now by uh, Gully from the Wolves Fancast. Gully, thanks for joining us and giving us your time this afternoon. No problem. Cheers. Um, obviously, you're coming to Oakwell at the weekend. You're, you're flying high in the league. What are the Wolves fans expecting ahead of this game as they come to Barnsley? Um, I think there's uh, confidence pouring through our veins at the moment, and uh, we can't see anything but a win pretty much everywhere we go and uh, we're playing in such a way that you know it's um, you know it's absolute you know just pure confidence absolutely from, from top to bottom in, in the whole club at, at the start of the season what what was a realistic expectation for the fans was it always um, promotion or bust with the investment that was being made or or, or did you expect how, 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 where you find yourself now I think um you know, we're naturally a bunch and um, 
probably more hoping to get in the playoffs and, and, and maybe a bit better. But um, what sort of ended up happening is kind of beyond our wildest dreams, really. Uh, especially given the fact that you know it's the large sort of foreign contingent that have come into the club, uh, including the manager who's never been a part of the, the, the equation in, in, in terms of magic in this country. Um, so, with that in mind, I don't think we actually envisage being in this position at this point in the season at all. When you come to Barnsley, obviously at the weekend you've got a you've got a big following coming with you as well, and obviously an expensive squad, a great squad of players, and a good manager, as you've just said yourself. I know there's a lot of good players, but if there's one player we can watch out for, who would you say Barnsley need to keep a real eye on at the weekend? I think everything that's good about Wolves at the moment comes through the midfield and through Ruben Neves. I mean, you know, I'll spend sort of ninety minutes just watching him almost. He's, he's absolutely light of a footballer. And uh, just to sort of actually experience this kind of level of footballer, this level of football, he's, he's kind of a privilege to experience. Um, so I mean, absolutely taking whatever you can from him, and if you can stop him, fair play. But he's, he's been rubbed up. He's, he's had a little bit of a kick in, in some games, and he's developed his game into such a way that that kind of thing doesn't affect him anymore. He seems to get better as the season's gone on. Yeah. Um, we have to, as we do with all our guests from the teams that are visiting Oakwell, and um, we have to push you for a for a, a score forecast. So, what do you think the result will be on Saturday? I went for a 3-0 to Wolves, so I'm going to stick to that. I it's just, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it does hurt after last Saturday at Millwall, that's a nice note to leave us on. <laughs> Gully, cheers for joining us and giving you time, and hopefully we'll speak to you again before the season's out, and well, actually, maybe when we're all in the Premier League together in the future, you never know. Yeah, of course. All the best to you guys as well. Cheers, Gully, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. We're joined now by ex-red centre-forward legend, former manager John Hendry. John, cheers for joining us. You're welcome as guys, you're more than welcome. Cheers, John. John, first off, obviously we've not heard your thoughts on the on the takeover at Barnsley. What a what a transformation things have been for Barnsley over the last four weeks. Yeah, I mean I heard the, the, the whispers a few months ago and uh and, and, and to be honest with you, it raised a few people's eyebrows. I mean, bearing in mind, I mean uh it was from China, it was from America, and you thought, well, that's a strange one. But hey, uh, in this day and age, you look, I mean, there's, there's, there's inputs from all over the world, investments, uh, companies try to get into football clubs, and why not Barnsley? And, uh, and let's hope it's a, it's a long and successful arrangement. Yeah, definitely. Um, we were talking to Brian Howard earlier on, who's now a, a football um, agent, and he said it, it, it'll benefit Barnsley on, on, on two fronts. First of all, with the investment as a financial security, um, you know, we can go out and probably buy players that before we maybe we were priced out of the market. And on the second half, which I think is really important for Barnsley, offering our own players improved deals that stops them leaving. Um, it, does this takeover, takeover come about a year late, given what happened to Barnsley? Sort of the transfer window last January and uh, and, and and during the summer. Sorry, I never got that question. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Is this this, this um, um, takeover? Is it about? You, is it too, a bit too late? Do you reckon we had a really talented squad? Lots of players left because we weren't in positions to offer them new contracts. And obviously, Sam Winall left. Mark Roberts, all the other players. Um, is it is it, is it maybe too, a little too late? No, no, not at all. In football, you never look back. That is the first thing that you, you learn uh, when you're in, in the game. Be it the, the, your last pass, your last goal, your last shot, your last game, your last season. You never look back in football. What's done is done. You always look ahead. And uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. It's, it's, it's Alex Ferguson, when he was in charge, he'd win the championship, the Premier League. As soon as he'd won that title, right through, the, as soon as that game's over, he's looking ahead. Yeah. He's planning for the future. And for you to succeed in football, that's the only way you, you can be successful by planning ahead and never, never looking back. And so I don't one. think it's I don't I don't not think it's it's too late. What's done is done. The club the club still gets the championship status. Uh, it's not as if the club get relegated. So it's one of them. You look on the, the positive side, they say, Okay, we'll get new investment come in here. Uh, we're looking in a long run relationship, a long term relationship to, to build for the future. Uh, so, certainly, no, 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 far from it. I mean, I always look ahead, never look back. Certainly. And Paul will be doing that now as well. John, obviously, yourself, you're on calendar news. We see you review the, the football in Yorkshire. So, you'll have seen a little bit of Barnsley. What have you made of the of the Reds so far this season, John? I'll be honest with you, I mean, uh, 
good start to the season. It has been very, very inconsistent. Good start, and then around the time, around the time that uh, the, the Paul was was linked with Sunderland. Since then, there has been a wobble. Is is that co- coincidental? Uh, well, who knows? What, for, for, what, it doesn't matter now. That what's done, what's happened, has happened. Uh, fortunately, I mean uh, the club. I mean, the, the good, an important win up at Sunderland last week, uh, which was vital, and hopefully that will get them back on the road. So if you had the takeover, the Sunderland victory, you've got to look onwards and upwards. Uh, for me, it's been very inconsistent, be that for one reason or another, but for the two reasons I've just mentioned, the win at Sunderland and the takeover, hey, you've got the positive about the things. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's obviously, it's January, it's that crazy month where lots of players move for big money, uh, leave clubs, star careers at new clubs. Um, Kiefer Moore joined Barnsley on a three and a half year deal in uh, on, on, on Monday. Um, Kiefer Moore, very tall, very mobile, tall striker. Is it right saying, Tom Bradshaw has, has worked his absolute socks off for Barnsley but at times playing the position that you know he plays in and the formation we play it's been a thankless task at times as a striker yourself John how important is it to have two different types of strikers because we discussed it before going on air and said we see the Bradshaw and um, more sort of partnership very much like yourself and Paul Wilkinson you were completely different but it, together it really worked didn't it mm, absolutely uh... And to be honest with you, I mean, just by bringing in Kiefer, I mean, it's first and foremost, it's given the whole place a lift. It's given the place a little spark. You bring any new, any new player into the building, it gives everyone a little G up as such. Uh, regarding the combination, yeah, I mean, Paul Wilkinson, myself, we were successful at Borough. We, we carried it on down at uh, down at Oakville as well, and indeed, likewise, once Paul left, I carried it on with Ashley Ward as well. So it's it is great having the, if you can click combination wise, it's, it's a big big plus for the club. For me, the, 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 on paper, Moore, Keeper Moore looks a, a great addition, and not only a great addition, but, but I mean. Tom Bradshaw, he'll be delighted because it would take the workload away from him because, I mean, the amount of uh, donkey work that he has to do, and sometimes he might need a rest, he might need, he might need uh, just to freshen things up. For me, it was a no-brainer for a football club. And a good deal, John, for Barnsley, really, getting a kid on, getting a, a, a player in on the top of his game coming from Rotherham as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I thought it was, a, it was a great acquisition. There's quite a few clubs in for him, uh, I'm led to believe. Uh, so from Barnsley's point of view... I think it's uh, hopefully it's, like it's got a brilliant signing. Um, spoke about before we've got the league leaders Wolves visiting Orkwell on Saturday um, obviously as we learned a lot of investment they're flying high they seem to get a result everywhere they go um, it, what do you expect on Saturday? I mean I've said on countless occasions I mean like Wolves for me are, are head and shoulders above any other team in the league Uh I, I, I remember several months ago speaking to um, Jim Stewart, who was the Nottingham Forest school keeping coach when, when, when uh, Warburton was there. And he just said, This is John, this is the best team by Mills as Wolves. And he says, They've just got so much strength. Uh, he says, And they'll walk the league. Even Phil Parkinson and Bolton, he said, that The Wolves will they'll win the league by 10 points. So when you've got managers making statements like that, I mean, it shows you how strong they are. If Barnsley go in the, in the right frame of mind here, yeah, listen, you'd ask uh, Eke, he would take a point now. Yeah. If Barnsley can get anything out of that, it would be a bonus. Uh, and I mean, it, it, any point out of that. So, come on, mate. Uh, if it's a defeat on Saturday, so be it. You've just got to say, right, okay, they're, they're, they're the outstanding team in the league. I've got to sort of brush myself down and just move on, on from that. The, the whole the whole season won't be sort of decided on the back of the Wolves game, but, uh, but certainly it'll be the toughest game of the season. Certainly will. Can we push you for a score forecast, John, for Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> I won't get back into Barnsley I'll tell you <laughs> no worries yeah. no, I've got to see I've got to see hopefully I'm just saying hopefully they'll get a draw hopefully they'll get a draw but that's that's the best we can hope for I think, right. I think it's yeah. going to be really really hard all the, all the pubs are open first pint on us <laughs> cheers <laughs> cheers John thanks for joining us mate it's been an absolute pleasure all the best cheers uh, any same guys cheers Don't John cheers. Bye-bye. 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 bye 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 and there's John Hendry there. He basically said, Barnsley are looking, I could take a point now. Myself and you would take a point now, but hearts rolling the head. And I, I just want to see the club hit the ground running at the weekend after after yeah, Millwall. Yeah, you do. And I know I always revert back to it, but we seem to play our best football when a team comes here and plays football. Um, 
and, and I can't help but think that Wolves will push forward, they will go for goal. Um, you know, when you look at Anish Grove, you look at Adam Amel, you look at Kiefer Moore, Bradshaw. I think we have goals all over us, haven't we? So, um, listen, it takes a second to score a goal, doesn't it? And it, we can't say Wolves have conceded any goals because they have. It'd be fantastic. A point would be, you know, three points it would be absolutely amazing way. A point is still something to be happy about. And let's face it, if you lose, we're not going to be the only team in this league that loses at home to Wolves who are absolutely running away with it. We're certainly not. And if you haven't got a ticket for the Wolves game already, get yourselves over to barnsleyfc.co.uk for all the information that you need. Or everything in one place, at Barnsley FC on Twitter. Get yourselves on there. Get everything you need ahead of the Wolves match, all the information you need about the upcoming away games at Aston Villa and Queen's Park Rangers as well. We've been Chris Mason and Carlo van der Waal. No, 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 no. I need a scorecast. I need oh, forecast for Saturday. Oh, well. yeah, we're yeah, we're yeah. going to win 2-1. Oh. I'm going to say 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Don't know if a heart can take a 2-2 two, because two, <laughs> we're probably winning 2-1 and then it'll be heartbreaking the last minute. I've been Chris Mason. He's been Carlo van der Waal. It has been your official Baz FC podcast on I Follow the Reds Report. Exclusive interviews with current players and ex-players. Home exclusively on I Follow. We'll catch you next time on the Red Report. And it's bye for now. Bye for now.